Okay, so this one sounds like an urban legend, right? Yeah. And it's actually true. Hello and welcome to the Pillow Talks podcast. We're your hosts, Vanessa and Xander Marin. I'm a sex therapist with over 20 years of experience. And I'm just a regular dude. We share the ups and downs in our relationship while giving you step-by-step techniques for improving yours. Make sure you subscribe for your weekly double date full of totally doable sex tips, practical relationship advice, hilarious and honest stories of what really goes on behind closed bedroom doors, and so much more. It's the sex education you wish you'd had. I feel like we should have a special theme song just for this episode because we are going to be doing some myth busting. Oh, boy. Doesn't sexual myth busters feel like it could be its own little song? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like the Ghostbusters song? Yeah, just like do 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 Myth Bustin. Sexual Ooh. myth bustin. <laughs> My mind is actually totally going blank on what the Ghostbusters song sounds like, so uh Who are you gonna call? Mythbusters! Ghost, Ghostbusters. <laughs> Ghost. Ghostbusters. <laughs> you know, for some reason, the song that was popping into my head was the like, what song is that? Abba? Wait, I don't know. We're both not going blank now. Something on me. Take on me. Take on me. Yeah. I don't know who that is. It's a good idea to record a podcast when your mind is going blank. Many times. <laughs> we have a good excuse, though. We are actually recording for the very first time in our new temporary home. Yes. If you've been following along with our personal lives, we packed up and shipped out of L.A. And we are outside of Santa Barbara right now. We're selling our house in L.A. And we're renting a place for a little bit while we look for one to buy up here. So this is our new setup. It won't be permanent. Yeah. Hopefully not, because we are currently holding our mics in our hands, and they are very heavy. It's a little janky. Yeah, it's, it's not our janky. nice... We had a really nice setup before. We will get back to it, but um, it's an interesting period of time. But Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we sound as good. I There's definitely a little more reverb in this room than I remember we'll in, leave our, our editor in our to other room. That but uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe Art will just clean that right up, and you won't even know. Yeah. So we were just so dedicated to the podcast, though. We could not take any time off. We had to keep recording, especially because today is a very important episode. You know, being in this field, we see so many weird urban legends, myths, all kinds of stuff floating around out in the universe about sex. Um, the sexual ether. <laughs> I was going to say that ether, and then I was like, that's too niche. Mm, that's I can't say sexy, ether. <laughs> sexy, sexy ether. Mm-mm. <laughs> so some of these myths are funny. Some of them are very damaging and harmful, oh, and yum. some of them are actually true. Or like have a shed of truth. A shed a shred, of truth? A shred, oh my God. <laughs> a shed of truth. A shred, a shred of tooth. As soon as I said, oh wait, a shred, <laughs> oh my God, a shred of truth. A shed of tooth. The moment I said it, I knew it wasn't coming out right, but I was like, I don't know how to fix this, so... <laughs> It's a tough day for us, guys, but we are going to do it. So we are going to examine some of your favorite weird sex facts. We put a call out on Instagram and we ask people, tell us what's something you've heard about sex and you are not sure if it's true or not. And we really want to be clear, this is going to be a shame-free zone here. This is one of our favorite things to do. I know it's can be challenging to ask questions like this because you feel embarrassed, right? About like, oh, I don't know if this actually is true or not, but I feel like I should know and I don't really want to ask. So this is a complete shame-free zone. We are not going to be making fun of anybody for asking these questions. All of the ones that we're going over are all from our community. It's kind of like a double whammy. The reason why there are so many of these myths out there is because Because we don't don't because we don't ask, we don't feel comfortable talking about sex and therefore we don't feel comfortable asking about Mm -hmm. sex. We don't really have a lot of good education around sex that goes on as we grow up. So of course we end up with all these myths. And then combine that on the flip side with the fact that we are so scared to actually ask a question later on when we hear this myth or even question it that it just kind of we get all ashamed and it's like, oh my God, oh, okay, uh, I don't know. I guess I'll just believe this thing. And so the myths just reinforce themselves. So it's really nice to be able to be like, you know what, we're just going to talk openly about 
all of this nonsense and a couple shreds of truth. <laughs> I, was about, I was thinking about ways to work shed of tooth back into the intro here. Yeah, we'll put all the fake ones out in the shed of tooth. Okay, the that. tooth shed? The tooth, no, the shed of tooth. <laughs> all right. I think that sounds better. So before we get into the shreds of tooth, before we get into <laughs> the truths, and before we get into the lies, uh, we're going to get into the review of the week. So Xander and Vanessa's podcast is the reason I went from having zero orgasms after almost two years with my partner, who tries so hard, to now having wait, had... Wait, wait, wait. You skipped over something. Oh, my God. That is a... Uh, I'm... <laughs> I don't know what to call this expression. <laughs> okay, it's a face. I mean, it's sort of like a, a concerned, a concerned, bashful face. I'm going to say bashful. Concerned, bashful. Bashfully concerned. Ba- okay, bashfully what do you think? concerned. What would, you, what would you say? That sounds like the title of your memoir, oh. Bashfully Concerned, the Sandra Moran story. <laughs> bashfully concerned, it would work much better if it was like a bachelor's something. <laughs> a bachelor's tell all. <laughs> <laughs> Bashfully can this is some good assonance. Oh. Yeah. Um, I would call that on the verge of tears emoji. Oh, okay. That's what that looks like to me. They've do, got wide eyes, the eyebrows are up, it's sort of like <laughs> Do you think this person is saying that that's how they are feeling because their partner tries so hard? Or yes. the partner who tries so hard is feeling that? That's way? how they're feeling about the partner. Like okay. oh, my partner tries so hard. Oh my god. Okay, Anyways. well. So this person said they went from having zero orgasms after almost two years with my partner who tries so hard to now having had three in just the last few weeks. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That may not sound like much, but as someone who spent the first 30 years of her life struggling to receive in the bedroom, it's honestly been life-changing. Thank y'all so much, and cheers to more orgasms. Woo. Hard eyes. <laughs> Woo. Well, thank you for that review. And three in the last few weeks does not sound like not much to me. That no, is that a is, huge accomplishment. That's not shabby. Something to celebrate, and I promise you they will start coming <laughs> Oh. More and more frequently. <laughs> so we just wanted to take a quick second to say thank you so much for your reviews. They are seriously the best way for the podcast to grow. And honestly, it also just makes us feel really good to read your reviews and to know that we're having a positive impact with this podcast. So we greatly, greatly appreciate you taking a minute of time out of your day to leave a review. The only place that you can currently do it is on Apple Podcasts. I want to explain how to find it because we've been getting some DMs from people who are confused and I don't blame you because it's very hard to find. This is part of the reason why I honestly never left reviews in the past yeah. before because I couldn't find it. So you have to go to the main page of Pillow Talks and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. And it's annoying because you have to go through all the episodes. But so like you bottom, go into Apple Podcasts, you hit the little search Search for Pillow Talk. Yeah, talks. the main page that you get to. Scroll all the way to the bottom. You'll see a review section, and you'll see stars. You can just hit five stars. You can leave a review, like write something into there. It takes sometimes a couple of days for it to pop up, so don't worry if you hit submit and you don't immediately see it. But that's how you find it. Also, Spotify recently added a star rating to their podcast too, so that one's Thanks, easier Spotify. to find. I know. <laughs> just search for Pillow Talks, and then on the main page you'll see. Kind of in the middle of the first screen over on the left side there's a little star rating so you just click the five stars nice do it <laughs> yes. smash those and five stars if you haven't heard us talk about this before we also do a giveaway of the week every single week to thank you for leaving reviews so if you are picked you can dm us on instagram at vanessa marin therapy ask us a question and we will send you back a personalized coaching session so that is just our small way of thanking you for leaving reviews and also we wanted to ask you, do you have any other ideas for a fun prize? Because we can mix it up. I think yeah. the personalized coaching sessions are a lot of fun, but we are happy to mix it up and do another weekly prize. So let us know. Come over to Instagram, Vanessa Marin Therapy. Okay, so let's get into our myths. All right, so number one is pineapple can make your vulva taste and smell sweet. This one 
is false. Oh. You hear this one floating around a lot, right? And I think it comes from this belief we are taught to believe vulvas taste and smell bad. So there are a lot of vulva owners who are really concerned with trying to get rid of the smell, make it taste better. And so we go down these weird rabbit holes of trying to discover, you know, what's going to alter our taste. There is a tiny shed of tooth to this one. Ooh, can I guess what it is? <laughs> yes. If you take a piece of pineapple, rub it, <laughs> rub it on the outside of your vulva, yes, it will taste like pineapple for a quick second. You may get an infection. It may oh, yeah. be real bad for you. I would never recommend that you do that. But, you know, if we're going to take this one literally, I can think of that would be the one way that this would work. But do not do that. Please do, do not, not do please, it. Somebody's please gonna do, do that. that now that you've said that. Do not do it. It's gonna lead to an infection or an irritation. Don't do it. It's probably gonna yes, burn because pineapple's will. got some <laughs> acid in it. <laughs> okay, but the shed of tooth to this one is that your diet overall does affect the way that you smell and taste. Yeah, but I don't think, it's not like a one for one correlation. I think people always think like, if I eat this flavor, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna taste like that flavor. Yeah. And that is completely yeah. not true at all. Certain things will make you taste in general in certain ways, but those two ways are not connected. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of like saying, oh, if you just don't eat bread, you'll lose weight. You know, it's like, well, bread isn't the one and only thing. And like, you know, it's just so much more complex than that, right? So like having a healthy diet overall is going to improve the smell and taste of your body. But like having a healthy diet overall has so many benefits. We're not going to get into all the like nuances and intricacies of that. But the bottom line is that there's no one food that you can just eat in mass quantities that's going to change the way you smell and taste. And the real bottom line here is that the way that you smell and taste is perfectly fine and wonderful and sexy and hot. So let's stop thinking about it as this bad thing that needs to be like mass and covered up. All right, so our next one is longer labia equals worn out vagina. And I think the way that this one really manifests is that people often be like, if your last partner had a really big penis, the vagina gets loose or overused. Like Ugh. it gets worn out by the penis. Yeah, we're just starting hot with all the bullshit oh, myths yeah. about the vulva. And yeah, vagina. so I think, yeah, this one really comes out as like, <laughs> did your last partner have a really big penis? Or like, oh, you've slept with a lot of men and mm -hmm. now your vagina has been worn out and it's loose and. Yeah. Okay. So the vagina does not get worn out, overused, or loose, or anything like that. The muscles in the vagina are incredible. They can withstand so much and shrink back to size. They're incredibly, incredibly elastic. So it's not a like each time you have sex, you're like wearing away at it kind of thing. Yeah. Also, penises just aren't that big. Hate yeah. to break it to you, penis owners. Yeah. I know. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, vaginas are able one. to are, are able to birth children. Uh -huh. I, you know, you, you, hey, you might have a big dick, but it is it's not, not child. Big. It is not child size. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Oh, and also the anatomy of the vulva has nothing to do with how much sex you've had either. So there are plenty of people who are just naturally born with longer labia, longer outer labia, longer inner labia. There are people born with shorter labia, and it has nothing to do with your sexual experience. It's just pure genetics. I just thought of this comparison. Like, it would be like if for men, we said, oh, if your penis is bent, it means like it suffered some <laughs> trauma or like you mastered masturbated wrong and you bent it. No, we forgot about my favorite meme of all time, which shows a big sausage and a skinny hot dog. And on the big sausage, it's like, this is a man who has never had sex before and he's pure and, yeah, you know, virgin. chased. And the skinny hot dog is like, this is a man, the penis of a man who's had a lot of sex and his penis has become squished by yeah, all the, the vaginas. Yeah, the vaginal muscles <laughs> have squished his penis. And we love, we love oh, posting love this that on social because we get so many messages from people being like, oh my God, oh my God, is, is it, it true? true? <laughs> is it true? <laughs> it's not true. We've got to post that when we set, make this episode. We got to put live. this yeah, on, on, like, on, the, on the show notes page. A, yeah, this is a perfect example of the bullshit myths that women and that vulva owners are taught where it's like, okay, we're talking about the same thing, right? A penis going into a vagina. So why is it that the woman or the vulva owner is the one who's getting all this pressure about like, oh, you're getting messed up. You're getting fucked up. Nobody's going to like that. You're getting stressed 
stretched out? Why don't we have any sort of pressure on the man for like, ooh, bro, your penis is going to shrink. It's yeah. getting squished all up in there all Yeah, the time. I know. It's like, oh, man, you've been jacking off too much. You're squeezing your dick <laughs> down into nothing. <laughs> You're deflating your balloon. <laughs> Squeezing your dick down. I mean, seriously. Oh my god. <laughs> seriously, I love but it. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like, oh man, look at that bent penis. Must have gotten like hit with a baseball or something. Oh my god, no, I don't. I was just thinking, like, hit what? With a what baseball? Could... I thought you were talking about like you're having sex. Or yeah, I mean, like, like suffered a horrible angle. sex accident. <laughs> Sex accidents do exist, but that's, I, I know, I know. That's urban myth part two. Yeah. Okay, I've got but one no, for but you. just like all vaginas look differently, penises also look different. They mm-hmm. are shaped different. They maybe have a bend in them. When they are erect, they are different. Sort of like they might stick Point in out, different directions. up, down, whatever. You know, it doesn't say anything about the sex that you've had or not had or whatever. Yeah. Same with the vagina. All right, I've got one for you now. Um, oh boy. Blue balls. Is it true that they cause excruciating pain? No, that is total bullshit. What I will say is that, yes, when you are sexually stimulated, if you are a man or if you are a woman, there can be a a sense of frustration, perhaps, or sort of a feeling of like, you know, you really want something. You want mm-hmm. a release that you are not getting. So, yeah, that is true. For a man, for a woman, there is a very simple solution, which is to take care of yourself with your hand. That, <laughs> that is how you it. that is how you solve that feeling of I feel like I want to release and I'm not getting it. However, it is not a medical condition. It is mm-hmm. not excruciating pain. It's just the feeling of I'm hungry. <laughs> Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go feed myself. Or like, huh, my penis is really hard and stimulated uh-huh. and um, I'm going to finish it off. Yeah, I mean, I think that this one, unfortunately, gets used by a lot of men to pressure their partner into oh, yeah. having sex. Of like, oh, I'm going to get blue balls. That's so unfair. It's so mean. It's going to be painful for me. You know, and so it's complete and utter bullshit. Yeah. Oh, anybody- yeah. Also, your balls will not turn blue. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I was I just know. thinking, like, why is it blue balls? Why isn't it something like blue? purple penis? No, blue is sad. I think that's probably what it is. Like, but sad. why is it even focused on the balls? Shouldn't it be on the penis? It's hard to explain, but you feel like... Oh, do you actually yeah. feel it in your balls? Yeah, you. I, I would say you feel it in that area. What, do you feel it in the penis? Really what it is, I think, is that it's like you you maybe you've been on and off stimulated. Your penis kind of maybe like starts to get hard and then the stimulation goes away. It gets soft and, uh, you know, so you and don't feel so that it's sense later. Of urge it's, in the penis. You feel yeah, it in the ball. It, like it's later. So look, I have experienced this before. And the, he's lived to tell the tale. I have lived to tell the tale. <laughs> there was a very easy solution. But you know, I will tell my story. It was the first night that Vanessa and I met. I forgot about this. And we had a uh, epic makeout session. Oh, yes. Um, it was uh, in the living room of my house. We were having a party. There was a dance party. I was DJing. Eventually, I think I put a mix on or something so Vanessa and I could dance and uh, <laughs> bump and grind. Um, so, you know, we were dancing and making out for a while. We went to my room. We made out for a very long time. We didn't do anything else that first time. And I walked Vanessa home at like 4 a.m. or something like that. (laughs) I had definitely gone from hard to soft many times that (laughs) night. By the time I got home, I remember being like, I'm feeling something down here. And so I masturbated. Took care of it. (laughs) But yeah, it was definitely like, a oh, yeah, I'm feeling something. I was like, oh, there's an easy solution to this. And I took care of it. Well, that is really interesting to me because I've always thought blue balls, like why do we call it the balls? That's so weird. I never realized that you actually feel that sensation in the balls versus in the penis. Yeah, you do. Interesting. It's not, but it's not excruciating. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's uncomfortable. Just just like the feeling of like, oh, I want to have an orgasm and I'm not having one. Like that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's the blue ball story. I was kind of proud of purple penis. I came up with that like in the moment, but the uh, perp peen. Perp peen. <laughs> I got the perp peen. <laughs> Sounds terrible. <laughs> All right, so now it's my turn to throw it back to you, Vanessa. Mm. Women can get a UTI if they don't pee right after sex. 
Ooh, this is an interesting one that has some nuance to it. Yeah. So when I was getting my training in sex therapy, what I was taught is that it's important for vulva owners, for women, to pee right after having sex so that you could flush out the urethra. Because a lot of people don't realize like the urethra kind of gets a lot of action when you've got hands, mouths, body parts, you know, all intermixed down there. And it's very easy for bacteria to get pushed up into the urethra. Mm -hmm. So the idea was if you pee, it just flushes everything out, kind of cleans it, make sure that you don't get an infection, a UTI, urinary tract infection. That was always what I was taught and it made a lot of sense to me and that's something that I got into the habit of doing is just getting up right afterwards. Sometimes people freak out and they're like, do I have to do it immediately? Or like, what's the amount of time that I need to do it? It's like, you don't have to freak out about it and do it that exact second, but in general, like, we're talking like 10 minutes plus or minus. I don't even want to throw out a, a general time frame, but like just go ahead and do it at some point. But there has been a very small study that was done recently that showed that there wasn't actually much of a connection between women who urinated afterwards and whether or not they got a UTI. This was a very small study. It's the only study that I'm aware of at this time that has been done. So my thought is going pee after sex, it's not really a big deal. You know, it hardly takes any time or any effort. So why not just continue to do it? And especially if you're somebody who has regularly struggled with UTIs, they can be so painful. Oh, yeah. So if there's something you can do that takes 10, 20 seconds of your time, why not just do it? The verdict is out on this one. I want to see more research done on the connection between urinating and UTIs. But for now, I say just continue peeing after sex. Yeah, I mean, the reality is the way this one was worded, like you could get a UTI no matter what you do. You can't, mm-hmm. you're not in full control over what is happening. Like yeah. it can happen no matter what. So there's never any guarantee. All right. So now that we're on the subject of peeing, we got to ask, oh. what is squirting? Isn't it just pee? Ooh, another big misconception. This one is false. So squirting is not pee. It is a fluid that is produced by the skein's glands. The thing is, though, that it passes through the urethra on its way out, and so it can pick up traces of urine. So sometimes people squirt and they feel like it smells like pee or it kind of looks like pee. I imagine it feels like pee if it's passing through the urethra. Exactly, but it's not. It is a separate fluid. I will mention that some people do urinate during sex if you have incontinence issues, pelvic floor issues. So if you really feel like that's happening for you, definitely go see a pelvic floor physical therapist. But the answer to is squirting pee is a resounding no. All right, I have one for you. So this one came to us from a woman and she said using lube will offend your husband. So what do you think about that one, husband? Oh, well, let's see. I can answer this personally and then I can talk about what I think may be going on with some men. Okay. So I would say, no, using lube would not offend me. Lube is an important part of sex. Uh, You know, your body does not always self-lubricate the way that you want it to or as much as you would like it to. Every vulva owner has a different level of self-lubrication. Yeah, lube is just a great tool to achieve the level of lubrication that you want. So I will say something that is so important to know about this. If you are a vulva owner, your level of wetness is not an indicator of your arousal. So there's actually kind of two myths wrapped up in one here. I think we're taught to believe that like, oh, I'm wet when I'm horny. Like the wetter I am, the hornier I am, the more turned on I am. And that is just not true at all. There is some relationship between those two, but you can be completely turned on and dry as the desert, and you can be very wet and not at all turned on. And this works for penis owners too, right? Like you have gotten plenty of erections at times where you weren't actually horny, right? Yep. And you have also been horny, but not able to get an erection. Yep. So (laughs) what's going on in our bodies and in our brains is not often in perfect alignment. That's another really important piece of this. Oh, yeah. I mean, in this one, the opposite is true of this. Like you were saying, you know, there are many people who think that someone having an erection is the one for one indicator of how into their partner they Mm -hmm. are. And that's also not true. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I was also talking about how fun lube is to use as a product, especially if you buy high quality lube. There's a whole other thing. Of oh, like, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of shit lube out there. Oh, Don't yeah. use it. So a lot of people may have had experience, bad experiences with lube. There is kind of sticky. It doesn't last for very long. Mm -hmm. um, that's really bad lube. You know, if you buy high quality lube, it's really great. It lasts for a long time. It feels really good. I would just say it's a fun product to use. Regardless, we highly, highly recommend using lube. Yeah, absolutely. It's it. You don't have to just use lube if you feel like you're dry. Yeah, you know, it's, like it's not like it's yeah, fun it's, to play with. Yeah, it's it's not a matter of oh, we only use this when your natural lubrication isn't enough. Like so, if, if you get rid of this idea that it's like ideally we never have to use this stuff, mm -hmm. then it's way more fun. It's just like yeah, lube is another tool in the sexual toolkit oh. that we use. You know, bust oh. out, got my utility belt, oh. <laughs> bust oh. out the lube. <laughs> Lube and handcuffs, baby. Do you keep that in your shed of tooth? <laughs> yeah, my tooth shed. I've got the sexual toolkit. It's loaded with the lube, the handcuffs. You know, um, what like a else? Little holster, a lube holster. Can you imagine? It's just like wrapped around your belt, and you just pull it out. Oh, I'm huh? sure this exists. Oh. I've never seen one myself, but I can. I'm sure, sure that this does exist. I'm just picturing you with like yeah. assless chaps and a little utility yeah. belt full of lube. Yeah. What I do want to get back to is <laughs> just passed right over that. He's yeah. like, no, I don't want to think. Yeah, about you know, I'm over chaps. it. I'm over it. You know, what I do want to get back to though is the way the question was originally worded that using lube will offend your husband. I, I think I do want to get realistic here. There is some shred of truth here. We gotta find a new phrase. <laughs> I know. There, there is some shred of truth here. Tru oh my god! I, I really, we really do. There, there is an ounce of truth. There, there is an ounce of truth here. There's an ounce of lube. It's probably a lot. Um, don't use an ounce of lube. Uh, it's like half, half a bottle. <laughs> Because isn't like, yeah, isn't it like two ounces yeah. is like is like the, the TSA approved amount uh, of liquid on thickness? That's a lot. Yeah. Don't use an ounce of lube. Don't use an Xander's ounce of lube. great advice oh for the God. day. Oh my God. I'm like, I'm totally lost That will now. offend your husband. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm a little lost I, on where I was going I with that. I think you were talking about that like maybe like people have had bad reactions yeah. to it in the past. Yeah. There definitely have been bad reactions in the past, which is where this myth comes from. And it's a self-perpetuating thing. Because I think a lot of men believe this myth as well. Like lube is, you know, sort of like a lesser than or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like, they think that the woman's like, not turned on. Yeah, like she's not turned on. Something mm -hmm. is wrong with her. Or they turn it inward and it's like, I'm not enough for you. Are you not enjoying sex So what's the solution me? then? So I think the first solution is, guys, you know, listen to this podcast. <laughs> invite your husband. Invite your male partner to listen to this podcast so they can hear it from the horse's mouth. But also... Are you the horse? Yeah, I'm the horse. I, got, I don't know. Um, but <laughs> this is a good, we're, we're getting weird we're on this getting, podcast. We're you know? really weird. New, new location, uh. <laughs> holding mics in our hands. You're this, the one tripping over your words today. Usually it's me. And you're weird. messing up idioms. I am. You're I taking am. over my job. I know. Should I just leave? And let yeah, you finish new, recording new it by move, yourself? New me. <laughs> All right, but anyway, where the hell was I? So, What's oh my the god! So yeah, the solution is yes, of course. Get your husband, get your male partner to listen to this podcast with you. But also, what you can do is introduce lube into your sex life in a really fun way as a, as something that is only going to add to the experience rather than it being like sex isn't very good. I'm not very wet let's use this thing it's just like introduce it as an enhancer and maybe a great first step is use it to give a hand job to your partner mm, because that be very that's sexy. really fun i mean a dry no one likes a dry hand job i mean i shouldn't someone, say i shouldn't say no I was, I was about to say yeah. i'm sure i'm sure some people do like dry hand jobs more than wet hand jobs but try out some lube get some high quality lube we'll probably put a recommendation to our favorite um, okay. in the show notes give your partner a hand job with some lube be like hey isn't this fun this is really sexy talk about how sexy and fun it is and then be like oh wouldn't it be fun to you know use some of this and get really wet when mm -hmm. we're having sex try that out see how it goes all right let's uh turn it back on you vanessa mm. swallowing cum has health benefits okay so this one sounds like an urban legend right yeah it is actually true 
Interesting. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so there are some very small studies, but they have shown that there are health benefits to semen. And whether that's ingesting it orally, like from oral sex, or even from getting it into your body, like if you're having like P and V intercourse. Mm -hmm. So again, the studies are small. We need to replicate them to look into this more. But there have been some studies that show that it has a number of health benefits, which is actually pretty shocking. Like, is this like more health benefits than like taking a supplement or is it like Probably something not. that you couldn't get elsewhere or that you're maybe already getting from your natural diet anyway? Okay, so one of the studies was, was a little controversial, but it showed that semen has a natural antidepressant quality. So it improved the moods of women who are regularly getting exposed to semen versus women who are using condoms with their partners. I guess so, from an evolutionary perspective, that does make a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, it, you can think of evolutionary reasons why that might make sense. But I want to be super clear here. Like, we are not saying, oh, stop taking your antidepressants and just give your partner a blowjob every day. Like, yeah, I was listening to this podcast. A sex therapist told me I should, yeah, I should just disregard. I should just completely disregard my psychiatrist and just start swallowing cum. No. Sorry. It is, it is, Sorry, people. And rubbing my vulva with pineapple. Uh, no, it is definitely not like that big of an effect. So it is not a replacement for antidepressants, but it was shown to have like mood boosting properties to okay. it, which is really interesting. Interesting. I was I was going to say like, you know, well, yeah, obviously cum has some type of macro breakdown. So like when protein, <laughs> yeah, like like there's going to be something in it. <laughs> it's it's not it's not just water. Vitamins, and so, you know, minerals. obviously ingesting anything is going to have some some type of health benefit. It might also have like a health drawback <laughs> as well, but yeah. I also found a very small study where researchers are looking into <laughs> the flame retardant qualities of semen. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Why? Who thinks of this stuff? Like, who was the first person? I'm sure this is how it happened. I, like, I, this, somebody just like <laughs> jizzed on a desk. It was like, let me try to light this on fire. <laughs> See what it does. What, what I Science, am, man. What I am curious Science. about is who is who is funding the uh, <laughs> the, the jizz fire, flame the flame retardant jizz. properties of semen. Because I don't know. Maybe. I was also thinking. I, I imagine this is a tough one to really research. You know the health benefits of semen because, like, how do you ethically design a research study around that? You you cannot do a double blind study. <laughs> where where the researchers and the participants don't know what they're ingesting like that's not going to work and typically know, you know man. typically double blind research is like oh, the, go he's the, gold, the gold gold standard here. for you know how we actually you know how we actually make <laughs> kind of scientific discoveries and you know there's ethically there, there's no way you can do that yeah like oh maybe you're getting semen maybe you're not so this one's a maybe but i think again this is a, like another one where if it's being turned into any sort of pressure of like yeah babe you should swallow it has health benefits like that's bullshit don't let a partner do that to you but it might it might actually have some health benefits. Yeah, so, so. if if you if you enjoy if you enjoy swallowing <laughs> cum, you know, you can use that as a reason to keep swallowing cum and just tell your partner, "Hey, give me some of that vitamin D." <laughs> and vitamin C, <laughs> vitamin S or you know, sperm semen cum, I don't know, I'm just thinking whatever whatever letter you want to give it. I, what was the episode when we were like a dia day? A dia day, keep, keep, a the, dia doctor day keeps the doctor away. A dia day keeps the doctor away. Yeah, so you know, it, it probably just as much as an apple a day keeps the doctor away, a dia day probably keeps the doctor away an equal amount cuz sure. apples are not going to prevent you from getting sick. I hate to break it to Only you. Only pineapples. All no, right. pineapples won't either. I feel like we have to constantly give this disclaimer. Someone will come away from this being like, wait, but, would they, but they didn't say it doesn't help. That's <laughs> true. All right. So the next one, the entry that we got into our question box on Instagram was simply belly button sex. And if you know, you know. <laughs> if you, if you know. don't, maybe you should just stop listening right now because you know, you know, you don't even need to know about this, but you might be intrigued. <laughs> This is such a weird episode, and it is about to get so much weirder. 
Okay, so belly button sex. If you have never heard about this before. I had not until about three months ago. Yeah, it was a recent thing that started going around the internet. I will give a lot of credit to our Instagram friend, Style Fit Fatty. She was somebody who started like compiling stories of this. She did not start this. Let's be, <laughs> let's be real clear. I don't. Sorry, yeah. Fatty. I'm not sure she's if she's ever engaged in it. it and didn't start it. <laughs> she started sharing stories. So basically, in the Mormon community, there are a number of people who were like male and female partners who were having intercourse and they were attempting penetration in the belly button instead of in the vagina. Because no one taught them. Exactly. what intercourse actually is. And so that's the thing about this myth is that like it's pretty funny to think about trying to have sex in your belly button. Like I'm looking at my belly button right now. Like there is no room for a dick she in tiny. there. What? Like it's hilarious. Well, you got like a like that, a, maybe right? a quarter of an inch of depth in there. <laughs> maybe you, you, How you much won't do even I have? touch yours. Yours oh, is too sensitive. Mine, mine's kind of deep. I maybe have like half an inch. Oh, half an inch deep, baby. Xander's got a very sensitive belly button. He's got that B spot. Yeah, put, put in my B, baby. <laughs> Okay, so it is funny to think about, but the reality is that it's actually incredibly sad, you know, that people are attempting this because of a complete and utter lack of sex education. So it's couples because they're saving themselves till marriage. They're doing what they've been taught to do. You know, this is the right thing to do. Save yourself. But they weren't taught a key key element. How it works. And I think that's unfortunately something that comes up so often. You know, this shame that we have around sex, it prevents us from having honest and open and realistic conversations about even the most basic of mechanics around yeah, and, it, right? And at the end of the day, you can't really blame them. There is a hilarious and sad logic to it. Babies <laughs> grow in the belly. Yeah. You there's know, just a like straight that's, path when, to put yeah, the like when you there. see when you see someone who's pregnant, it would appear as if perhaps the <laughs> belly button might somehow be related Leads right into to it. that, right? Like it's right there. Yeah, so I mean, again, that's like a big part of why we do this work. It's so important to us to share the truth about how sex really works and to take away the shame and the stigma that we're all taught to have. And, you know, regardless of what your religious beliefs are, if you want to save yourself till marriage, it's your sex life. You do what feels good for you. But we want people to be prepared and equipped with accurate information. I mean, I will say, too, like in my private practice, I had a number of clients who had no idea how to make penetration happen. Some of them were just rubbing along the labia rubbing like kind of between the labia and the leg Mm -hmm. they didn't know that like you know you were supposed to use your hand to help it so like there are a surprising number of people who don't understand the basic mechanics of how p and v intercourse is supposed to work it's really heartbreaking like i worked with couples who hadn't consummated their marriage for years because they were trying to figure it out and they felt such an enormous sense of shame like can you imagine having to tell a therapist or a doctor like we've been trying for years and like nothing's happening i mean i i remember there was one couple who came to me because they were trying to get pregnant and they thought that they were infertile and they even went to an infertility specialist and nobody at any point ever told them or like asked them are you, you know, really having sex yeah what are you doing do you you know what are what is it that you're doing during sex and so It was in our session that we were able to realize like, oh, they didn't understand the mechanics of penetration. One week later, they were pregnant. It wasn't that fast. I have no no idea. I have no idea. (laughs) You know, there are stories of other people getting really bad, you know, infections, irritation, because they're trying so hard to make the penetration happen in the belly button. Like you can really damage your penis, your belly button, like a lot can go wrong. So again, like I get that it's funny and like, yes, we can we can giggle about it, but it's also like a really sad thing that so many people just don't understand. All right, well, shifting gears now. um, (laughs) Let's get into our last one for today. You know, we actually, we had a lot of questions, so we might have to do a part two of this if you guys like the myth busters. But let's do our last one, which is simultaneous orgasm should always happen. So first of all, what is simultaneous orgasm for the people who might not be sure? (laughs) Simultaneous orgasm is when you both orgasm at the same time. And I think we are all taught to believe this because this is what we see in movies 
in TV, in porn, like characters Mm -hmm. always orgasm at the exact same moment. And that Mm -hmm. just feels like kind of the peak experience, right? Like you both just have an orgasm and it's over with and it's so great and wonderful. And it usually happens in like 30 seconds. Oh yeah, with only intercourse (laughs) between a a male and a female, of course. Or maybe it even looks like their clothes are all still on and it's like, how is this even happening? Yeah. So this is a myth. Um, In reality, simultaneous orgasm is quite rare. And I like to tell people that it's just not a good goal to work towards because if you're trying to work towards it, somebody is always trying to speed up. Somebody is always trying to slow down. There's a lot of pressure on both people. And if you've had any sort of challenges or difficulty with your orgasm, like it just makes it so much harder. So I say do not set it as a goal. Do not expect that that's the gold standard of your sex life. And it can be a lot more fun to focus on just having your orgasm at your own like time too, yeah. right? And then letting your partner focus on theirs. I will say, however, that it is something that you can work towards if it feels important to you. Yeah, so, I think the work is the really important mm-hmm. part. Simultaneous orgasm does not happen naturally. Exactly. It does not happen. It may happen one out of a hundred times because you're just talking about chance. Like yeah. person one takes X amount of time. Person Y <laughs> takes Y amount of time. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you roll the dice, like occasionally you're gonna end up with the same time, but it does not happen naturally with regularity unless you work at it. So I will say that Xander and I do have simultaneous orgasms, and that's because, as Xander was emphasizing, we've put a lot of work into it. Yeah, but still, not uh, every time. Yeah, of, of, yeah, not every time. And we really prioritize my pleasure as much as his, which is something that does not happen in the vast majority of male-female pairings. And it's not something I did at first. It took me a little while to, uh, yeah. <laughs> to figure out that I was being a little selfish. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of other stuff that goes into this myth, but the overall thing that we want to say is it's not something that just happens naturally it's not something that should just happen naturally like let's put this one to bed all right well that is all the myths that we can be busting all the busting that we can do today we busted our not today on these myths guys (laughs) our brains are busted today these are all the myths that we can get to today but if you want to hear a part two we have so many more that we could get to so come on over to instagram and let us know we're at vanessa marin therapy And actually, we can bust one more myth for you. Or you can bust it yourself. You you have to take an action to bust it. We're going to set you up. And then if you want to bust this myth for yourself. (laughs) So convoluted. (laughs) So in the description of this episode, we will put a link to a report that we have put together about how long sex should last. I think this is a question a lot of us have, right? Yeah, should you be able to go all night? Mm Mm-hmm. All night long, baby. Real men go all night. (laughs) <laughs> so we, we did a survey. This and see. Uh, tens of thousands of people have filled yes. it out at this point. So we put together, we crunched all the data, we looked at all the numbers, and we will let you know how long should it last because you are wrong. Whatever it is that you're thinking right now. <laughs> Unless you are thinking of of the right <laughs> number in, in the right range. I don't know. <laughs> that's something that there's a huge misunderstanding about. So you're definitely going to want to check this out. All right. Well, that's it for today's episode of Pillow Talks. Thank you so much for listening. Join us again next week when we talk about a very hot button issue, attraction and hygiene. I'll be honest. This is an episode that we have been like, it's been requested of us many times. And I have felt very nervous to record it because it's such a sensitive issue. You know, it stirs up so much for so many people thinking about like, I love my partner, but I've lost my attraction to them. My partner doesn't take care of themselves. How do I like nicely ask my partner to do these basic hygiene things? Like it is so sensitive. So we've been thinking about this one for a long time and we think that we have an approach for how to handle it as sensitively as possible, but it's going to be a really interesting one. Yeah. Hot button, not hot belly button. (laughs) And on that note, goodbye. Goodbye.